pulled Schuler out of the game. Schuler was four for 10, 47 yards. Every defensive player in the league knows how much money Schuler is making, and you can bet they're just aching to drop him on his fat wallet. Young guy in the spotlight with the pressure of a franchise on his shoulders. Do you think sometimes it's better to be the untouted, anonymous rookie? In Brian Hennessy's case, probably not. As Tom Friend shows us, it's a story reminiscent of the movie Rudy. Undersized kid from a small town begs his way into a prominent football program. Dear coach. That's Buddy Ryan taking a swing at Kevin Gilbride. My name is Brian Hennessy. Mr. Ryan, I'm a hard worker who has been unable to get an honest look from a, from a team. You know how people always say, get a job? Well, Brian Hennessy wanted a job in the National Football League. Now, of course, to get a job, you have to have a resume, and Brian had one. All-time leading rusher at Bucknell, 5'10", 215 pounds, could bench press 400 pounds, could squat 700 pounds, has milk at every meal, goes to bed every night with a football. Well, he sends this resume to a bunch of teams, the Giants, the Jets, the Eagles, and every single time, trash can. There were times it, it, I just hit rock bottom. But then the unthinkable happened. The Arizona Cardinals hired that madman, Buddy Ryan. And so Brian was like, that's my chance. I was singing a little song, Buddy's Back, or something like that. Brian turned into a cat burglar, scheming any way he could to meet Buddy. I had a friend, a, a retired police officer, Philadelphia police officer, who uh, took it as his mission to send Buddy at least one or two faxes a day just to totally get his attention to the point where he, I thought I was going to be arrested. Had you gotten his faxes? Because he said he faxed like No, I had got it. Trash can. I called up there and said I was with uh, Federal Express and I needed to know when he would be in the office. I knew he was there that, that Friday and that I wanted to arrive Thursday just so I could scout out the area. At first, I thought he was crazy. I was like, what kind of NFL coach is going to give anyone a shot to showing up at the front door? I was out cutting grass and uh, I see him standing there with a suitcase and some tapes and I asked him where he's going. He said he's going to Arizona to see Buddy Ryan. I said, oh, yeah, I, that's, that's all right. I didn't pay no attention to it. He came straight from the airport to the Cardinals facility. Sweet talked to security guard, was very polite to the receptionist, had his trusty tape with him, came over to this side of this couch, and then it hit him. His old coach at Bucknell was friends with the defensive coordinator of the Cardinals, Ronnie Jones. Ronnie could look at his tape. When he told me he'd come 2,000 miles to talk with Buddy Ryan, you, you had to listen to the young man. I told him I would be back Friday morning to sit here um, until Buddy talked to me or called the police. Friday, he showed up at 5.30 a.m., deep, deep, deep undercover. I felt like I was either a terrorist or one of these people that chase around athletes, a, stalk a stalker. And I go sit in the lobby. I'm sitting there for 15 minutes. Here comes Coach Ryan walking in. I rehearsed this speech a million times that I'm, what I'm going to say to him. He walks in. He says, good morning, son. And all I can say is, good morning, Coach, as he walks by and goes into his office. Trash can. I went back and sat down, and to my surprise, Coach Ryan knew why I was there. And Coach Atkins, the offensive coordinator and running back coach, comes out, and he says, uh, we looked at your film last night. And I thought, here I go, the same old story that I heard from the Eagles. We don't think you can upgrade us. He said, uh, and we liked what we saw. And he said, um, Coach Ryan wants to see you. Uh, at that point, I, when I walked, and then I followed him back to Coach Ryan's office. And I'd like to say, the only way I can explain it, it felt like my heart was coming through my neck. I was so nervous. When you saw this kid, what did you think? Well, I thought it was an insurance salesman or something. <laughs> Trash can. When he finally did talk to me, he had my letter. And I, I know Rich Kotai probably wiped his butt with my letter and, <laughs> and flushed it that day. The one thing he says, the one guy who would give me a chance is Buddy Ryan. Do you agree with that? Are you the kind of guy that's going to give a guy? Well, if I look you in the eye and I think you're sincere, I will. But, you know, there's a lot of liars in this business, too. you got to call them out. I said, I would do anything you want me, Coach. I said, I'll do anything. If you want me to run down on kickoffs and rip someone's head off in your honor, that's fine. The coaches walked him outside, had him run the 40-yard dash. He didn't have his contact lenses in, so he dropped a couple passes. But still, they signed him. I called him once. I said, he's like Santa Claus to me. It's such an unbelievable story. Make a great movie. But haven't they done that already? Greatest value to us is we don't care whether you get hurt. <laughs> Our first teams are going to pound on you like you're the worst enemy. We beat him up all the time. He just keeps coming. <laughs> and he's running and block you with no pads on. So I say, so you know, all the defense say, okay, well, we, you know, we get to chat. We, <laughs> we let you know what's going on. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, Rudy, that's the yeah. He got to, he got to be here. He got to have Rudy. Brian Hennessy, I mean. Uh, it's crazy. I walk from practice and everyone hollers, hey Rudy, can I have your autograph? And sometimes I sign Rudy, number 39. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. In the movie, all Rudy wants to do is run through that tunnel once, get on the field for just one play. Well, Buddy likes Brian, so assuming he doesn't miss too many blocks or drop too many passes or get his neck broken charging downfield on some preseason kickoff, he'll make it to the show too. Thanks for your time, sir, and I look forward to impressing you. Best regards, Brian Hennessy. What makes this more touching is that after his struggle to be noticed, Brian almost decided not to go to training camp. See, a couple weeks before he was invited, his older brother, Rick, died in an accident. Rick was on leave from the Air Force. He had a couple of drinks, decided not to drive, and as he was walking home, he tripped, hit his head, fell into a canal, and drowned. I'm dedicating my season to my brother. I, I actually wear his dog tags with me out on the field and, and, and sometimes I'll just touch them and hope he's watching and, and hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll meet him again. Hennessy and the Cardinals will get their next go-round against Chicago this Saturday. Word out of camp is that quarterback Steve Berline may sit out with a strained back, especially since Buddy Ryan wants to get a look at number three quarterback Will Fuhrer and number four Chris Swartz. Susie, if Hennessy is the gritty guy that he seems, don't be surprised if Buddy turns him into a defensive demon. Buddy's specialty has always been the D. With the Bears in 1985, he formed one of the most feared defensive units ever to rattle somebody's teeth. Scorching through the playoffs that season and the Super Bowl, they outscored their opponents 91 to 10. Buddy also turned Philadelphia and Houston into defensive stalwarts. Now with Arizona, Ditto. Ryan's new look 46 defense shellacked the 49ers in the first preseason game. They held the Niners' powerful first string offense scoreless and they forced six turn turnovers, including two interceptions by one of Buddy's six former Eagles, Clyde Simmons. He just saw return one of them for a touchdown. This defense is nasty. The last time the Cardinals forced six turnovers in a game, 1991, and they've only done it twice in the last 10 years. Look out, NFC East. No doubt, Buddy knows defense. And Buddy also knows loyalty. He stands up for his players, and they always return the sentiment. During Ryan's last four seasons with both the Eagles and the Oilers, in games in which his team totaled five or more sacks and turnovers in a game, the record was 36-9. and nine.